<clears throat> hmm. It's all very quiet tonight. Have I not got something? Right, good morning. Good, good evening, everybody. Um, can I ask members or officers who are here to turn off any electronic device um, to move to avoid feedback? Uh, the meeting will be recorded and data collected during the recording of the meeting will be retained in accordance with the Council's data retention policy. The recording of the meeting will be added to the Council's website. So can I can I welcome you to this meeting? But I have to say, I don't think it's at all welcome that we have to meet in these circumstances. We now know that the infection rate in Swale is over 200 to 100,000, and it's going up very sharply week after week, or in fact, day, day after day. And I, I, I think it's really unacceptable that, that members and officers should be required to sit in this very enclosed environment with a limited amount of ventilation when we could easily be carrying out this business um, in a hybrid or in a remote fashion as we've done successfully for over a year. Um, having, having welcomed those of you here, can I also welcome any members who are attending remotely and members of the public and can I in particular uh, welcome Councillor Valentine uh, into the cabinet? Uh, I think it's the first meeting since we re, re elected you, reappointed you to a cabinet post. Um, the following staff are in attendance in the Council Chamber, the Chief Executive um, and Democratic Services. Uh, I think the uh, emergency evacuation procedures are well known to everybody and I, I don't intend reading them out. Uh, apologies for absence, uh, Councillor Bulldock is una unable to attend um, and he sends his apologies. Hmm? Well, Eddie Thomas sends his apologies as, as a, a Deputy Cabinet Member. OK, the minutes of the meeting held on June the 9th, are we agreed there a um, correct record. We are agreed. And uh, can I ask if there are any declarations of interest at this meeting? There are none. Um, and can I advise that so the agenda items are Part B reports for decision by the Cabinet? So we'll, uh, we'll move on to agenda item five which is the outturn financial report for the whole of the financial year 2021. And I just give some background to each of the recommendations before we, we move to approve those. So if you look through the port report, you'll see the projected overspend has gone down from 3.8 million in March to 2.9 million at the year end these movements are tracked in table one on page seven. The overall picture is contained in table two, and this shows the 2.9 million overspend being balanced by government COVID funding, and that the sources of that funding are detailed in tables four and five. This leaves us with a net underspend on the 2021 budget of 1.32 million. And what we wish that uh, Cabinet agrees to is that we regard that overspend, uh, underspend rather, uh, 
on last year's budget as a resource for this year's budget, not to meet the budget per se, but to meet any unexpected, though I think we can expect them, costs of COVID during the current financial year. So we have a budget that is based on neutrality as far as um, COVID is concerned, and it, we can't seriously believe that that won't be um, a cost pressure on, on our budget. So we're proposing to move that with the um, reduction of 294,000 um, rollovers, which are necessary to deliver our services adequ adequately. Um, we need to agree the capital rollovers in Table 17 to facilitate the continuing delivery of our capital programme. And Table 3 in the report indicates how we should transfer some savings to reserves. Um, members will note that we have a litigation settlement which is supported by our legal officers and I, I would recommend that we uh, um, fulfil that. Lastly, we, we do need to top up the general reserve. So can, can we, um, would somebody like to propose the eight recommendations with with two amendments in number three, it says to delegate to the chief financial officer. We will now change that to delegate to the chief executive. And in item eight, we will have to delegate to the chief executive again, the authority to top up the general reserves as required to set out in paragraph 330. So a proposer, Councillor Bonney, Seconder, Councillor Palmer. Are, are we all agreed? Agreed. Excellent. Thank you very much. Got no, no indications. OK. OK, let's move on to item six. And this is about land at Colgate's Closer Ore, uh, a community asset transfer. And uh, Councillor Bonnie will take us through this and steer us in the right direction. Thanks very much. Ooh, take my mask off. It's a bit muffled behind that. Um, thank you very much. There you go. That's all right, it stops the echo. Thank you. Um, so hopefully this is a fairly straightforward um, uh, recommendation here um, that cabinet agrees into a, a new 125 year lease on the property um, which is land at Colgate's close or um, with all parish council as uh, on the terms set out in the, uh, append, uh, in the appended report here and that the head of property services in consultation with the cabinet member I may be authorised to finalise the terms and head of legal services to be authorised to negotiate and complete the necessary legal formalities, including all deeds and agreements. Um, this is a plot of land that is um, laying unused um, and is in line with our asset transfer policy, um, the community asset transfer policy, um, to bring this into use uh, by all parish council. So I welcome any questions and if there's a do any uh, members have comments or questions to make it's a pretty straightforward do you want to speak or do you want to post yeah. Yeah, I, I think this is actually a very good use and a very good idea um, having visited that on no end of occasions it's at the end of what was formerly in some cases and still is in others uh, affordable housing area but realistically it's of no use for anything other than the proposal that is lined out and I think this will make a really good addition for the parish of all uh, and for the borough. Yeah. So yes I'd like to propose this item. Agreed. Oh, thanks. <laughs> OK, so uh, tonight this is the options for the delivery of the proper, 
property maintenance contract. Uh, Cabinet is recommended to proceed with option three, and I'll go through the three options in a minute, as set out in the report, which is modified, is a modified term contract for the delivery of property maintenance from the 1st of April uh, 2022. So there's three options before members tonight. The first one is to retain the status quo, i.e. a single uh, term contract, uh, pretty much the same as we have at the moment. Option two is to create a framework contract along the lines of st the staying put framework that we currently have elsewhere in the council. And option three is to modify the current term contract to encourage all labour and materials to be locally based, um, straight procured. Um, there, I, I think there has been a, a considerable amount of discussion between me and the officers and also with other members. Um, I think in an ideal world, um, we would love to go down the framework contracts um, on similar lines to staying put. However, given the contract sum that's involved here, and then the amount of work that it would take to put in place, especially for all the different trades, um, the underlying um, process um, for this, it would pretty much dwarf actually um, what the contract delivers. So it would take an inordinate amount of officer time and resource in order to put that in place. Um, I think we all feel quite strongly and certainly I do that we would like to see more opportunities for um, local tradespeople and um, those services um, to help us maintain our properties. Um, we can't actually, um, the way um, the the legal system is based we can't insist upon that but we can encourage it in the strongest possible terms so what we i i think my recommendation here is option three which is the modified contract term and that is to bring in as much as possible the local trades and it would then have a better balance between officer resource and time um, compared to option two thank you very much so i'm going to propose Option three. I, I think that sounds very measured. Have, have, have we got a seconder? Councillor Palmer. Um, ha, have we got anybody who actually wants to argue against this recommendation? I didn't think we would have. So uh, are we all agreed? Recommendation, the recommendation is that we go for option three. Great. Agreed? Excellent. OK. Oh, agenda item eight. Um, again, I think it's a straightforward. We're rec recommended to enter into a contract with Laser Buying Group from the 1st of October 2021 until September the 30th, 2025, for electricity and on a one plus one plus one basis for the gas supply on terms set out. Um, I, I've got nothing to add to that. Are we, are we agreed on that? Go on, uh, Councillor Valentine. Just ask a question. Um, as in paragraph 3.2, the recommendation is that we move 50% of our electricity usage to option two. I was just wondering why we're moving 50% and 100%. Would you like, sorry, it's Eva Harris from Property Services. Okay, e Eva. Yes. Come, come in and answer uh, Councillor Valentine's question. Yes, um, it, it's basically, um, I don't know if you can hear me okay. Yeah. Eva, we, we can hear you, but we can't hear what you're saying. At least I can't. We're just trying to see if we can turn the volume up. Is that okay? Can you hear? Him? Okay. If um, it, it's basically to do with um, the risk, minimising the risk, so we don't get any financial penalties if we don't consume um, the, the full amount in the green basket. If we have 50%, we can always increase that um, without any financial penalties um, when we have a better idea of, su of supply consumption um, going forward with the new ways of working. Okay. So, so thanks very much. 
You, okay. Um, it minimises the financial risk. Right, okay. So I, I, I propose we accept the recommendation and a seconder, Councillor Valentine. Okay. Agreed, everyone agreed? A agreed. Right, what have we got left, um, Billy? What about the... Okay, have I got those? No. Okay. Which is first, by the way? Okay. All right, everybody. We've got we've got the minutes um, and then recommendations for approval from the JTB meeting on the twenty first of June. Um, all agreed. Agreed. Okay. And we've got the local plan panel meeting from last Thursday. Uh, minutes of that. Um, agree? Do, do we agree those minutes? Go on. I probably should. Sorry. Um, at the time that was agreed, I wasn't. I hadn't attended any board, but I am a board member on the Kent Downs A O N B. So. I don't think that's for something. Something to be amended at this meeting. No, but I'll just declare it as an interest. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I, I think that completes the agenda. Um, I started out by saying it's it's reprehensible, I think, that we have to meet like this, but we have only met for 16 minutes, and I hope you all get home safely.